This is hardcore Minecraft, and I just died. What did I just do? So to commemorate my time in this world and all the builds I've done, I present to you Hardcore Minecraft Season 1, the full movie. This is Hardcore Minecraft, where one wrong move means the end of the series. We've all seen this type of hardcore video where people get their perfect start by getting some basic materials, building a nice house, and calling it a day. But not me. My goals for this episode are to get maxed out diamond gear, conquer the end, and of course, build the perfect house. This is the story of how I built my starter house out of obsidian, and it all starts with one small tree. With food and armor secured for now, I started my search for a village, but this did not go as planned. Not to sound cliche, but I'm about to have the craziest start in hardcore Minecraft. Why is there just a chain sticking up? Is that a mineshaft? No, that's dirt. Is that a mineshaft? It is. Whoa, I, I heard that. Oh, we dead. He dead dead. All right, new plan. Um, oh gosh. All right, this was a bad plan. I can already tell this is not going to be... This is a death trap, dude. Oh no, hold on, hold on. This is not what I expected to happen. That's the deep dark. And, oh, those are zombies. But I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any shriekers nearby though. So I should be okay. There are skulk sensors though, which scare the crap out of me. Yeah, I think this is just the regular biome. I don't think there's anything bad here. Can I land on skulk veins? Nope. Oh, uh, that is an ancient city. I need to get out of here. Is that day? That is daylight for sure. Wait, so to get out of here, I need to get into the ancient city and use the water to get up. All right, there's a shrieker right down there and there's one down there. Do I go for a chest? Would that be ill-advised? There is a chest right up. Okay, come on. I have to at least grab one chest while I'm here. <gasps> Ooh. Oh no. Okay. I have a plan. I'm gonna break this chest and I'm gonna get out of here. All right, I'm getting out of here. Goodbye, not letting the third one go off. Oh no. Welcome to AGN's hardcore. Ooh. Welcome to my hardcore Minecraft series. I need to find shelter because this place is crazy. If any terrain was to say, hey, here's an ancient city, this would be it. Like this is, it's a little extravagant. It's a little extra. It's a little- Stop interrupting me. Continuing along the mountain, I found a pillager outpost, which gave me a crossbow and some arrows. I also smelted the iron I got from the cave, made a shield, put on some pants, got a bucket, and continued my search. Eventually, I found a huge village that had two blacksmiths, each providing me with iron armor. But now that I have a village to set up camp- Wait, would this count as a starter house? No, because I didn't build it, right? Anyways, now that I've set up camp, it's time to get to work. I set up a simple villager breeder, a small iron farm, and a small trading center. Let me explain. If you assign a villager to any of these three workstations, you can eventually trade for diamond tools, armor, and weapons. However, that requires a lot of emeralds, and I had zero. Which brings me to part one of my plan, the iron farm. You see, the villagers that will give me diamond gear also have an iron trade, meaning I can level them up while also getting enough emeralds to afford the new armor. However, sitting around waiting for the farm is way too slow. So, in addition to the iron farm, I can use these guys to trade sticks for emeralds. The the only problem with that is I don't have enough villagers to do both, which is why I built the villager breeder, which should produce enough villagers for me to expand in the future. With all three farms running, it was only a matter of time before I could put away the old armor set and equip my brand new diamond gear. As great as this armor is, it doesn't have the best enchants. I have 44 levels, which is enough to do some level 30 enchants. I don't have any lapis, but maybe I could find some and then I could maybe do some level 30 enchants. And after a bit more tree chopping, trading, and enchanting, my gear is looking a little bit better. Oh, and this villager right here, he's pretty cool. He has mending, looting three, and a name tag. I mean, come on, that, that's just fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry, you're cool too. Villagers aside, this gear should be strong enough for the time being, as I need to make my way to the nether for blaze rods and ender pearls. I'm sure you can imagine why I need these materials, so I'll ask you a simple question. Is it normal to defeat the ender dragon before you build your first house? First up, ender pearls. Now time for the blaze rods. Yo! Wait, what? How, how did I explore every bot? I literally put my foot on this piece of soul sand, I think, and I, and I managed to complete that. Woo! <laughs> That's scary, dude.
Woo! 16 blaze rods. That's enough. I'm getting out of here, dude. Back at base, I gather the materials I need to conquer the end. Beds, arrows, blocks, whatever I had that would ensure my survival. And using my new eyes to ender, I eventually found the stronghold, which scared me since it was in the deep dark. But I completed the portal and was ready to defeat Minecraft's biggest boss. Entering the end, Okay, that's not working. And it's gone. I'll take that. And now for the good stuff. And I'm- Whoa! Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that the main end island? I'm not going to try to fly to it because my elytra doesn't have enough durability, but dude, it's right there. And I could see it all the way back there. Like I knew this is how the end worked, but I've never seen it before. This is so cool. Look at that. It's all around me. With a successful trip to the end under my belt, I upgraded my gear even more and set off to collect everything I need to build the house. Most notably of which is the obsidian, but I'm saving that for last. And now I have all the materials gathered I need to build the house and the spot laid out right next to the- bleh, I'm in a creeper hole. With the spot next to the village picked out, it's time for me to finally build my obsidian house. And now most of the exterior is complete. I still have to put like a plant there and put some plants outside as well. But the basic structure is done. We head inside here. And as you can see, most of the structure is done here as well. We got some nice little arches. This will be a kitchen. Then we have like the main area. And then that will be a garage. And I'll have bedroom stuff up here and an attic upstairs. But I, uh... I think I got more obsidian than I needed. But that's okay because if I head outside here, uh... Notice the sun is perfectly straight up. That's kind of cool. And if we head back inside, we can now see that all the decorations are here. As soon as you walk in, you see the enchanting setup. To the left, we have the kitchen, which I'm quite proud of. I have cabinets, brewing stands, different furnace types, and you can see all the little details I put in here to make it look a little bit more natural. This was going to be stuff for honey, but I don't have any honey stuff right now. So just imagine there'd be honeycomb blocks there and then bottles of honey and whatever. But if we head over here, we can see another decoration thing. And then this thing here is meant to be like a glass casing for some wheat and a pumpkin. There's eight armor stands here and one in like every direction. So you have like this way, this way, this way, this way. And it has like a little hat on it. And it looks like a bundle of wheat. It's pretty cool. And I have the hay bale there. So yeah, it's like a bundle of wheat. And I've got this little this dude anyways heading over this way we can see the garage which is going to be like my main storage and then up here is the attic where i'll have the other storage in case the garage gets full i also have some workstations up here that i'll probably never use and heading back down here you can see my bed with my favorite painting and then this decoration is pretty cool i was going for a modern type of thing and i'll put a conduit and a beacon here at some point but i have my dragon egg and dragon head here and then this hallway is for all my relics so to speak like i have my first pickaxe the golden carrots from the ruined portal my first sapling first diamond and then my first book I got from the ancient city. Oh wait, I forgot to put the old armor in here. There we go. Oh, and I forgot to mention the pumpkin field. Yeah, so I have a pumpkin field up here. Uh, this is gonna be a flower field, cocoa bean field. We've got some carrots, which actually need to be harvested. I need to put... Dude, what is with this? Dude! Do they always give four? I really thought they gave three or something. Oh, they gave five. Nom, 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 nom. And then I have a little melon field over here, but I didn't grab enough to finish it yet. So I'll do that another time. Here's some replay shots of the full house. I've never built a suburban house in Minecraft before, let alone out of obsidian, but I think it turned out pretty well. Now I could finish the rest of the details or I could go back to the ancient city and get Swift Sneak 3. Yeah, no way. I'm not going back to that ancient city. <laughs> no, no. I am not ending my series on episode one. And here we are. I'm gonna die. How? 
How? I'm on, I'm on wool. I think I should be able to loot this chest. Swift sneak three. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Oh wait, there's a chest here too. All right, this is way too slow. I'm getting so impatient. Oh, I summoned the warden over there. All this time I've been thinking, man, this could be the scariest thing ever. That dude spawns. And I'm just over here because I flew away. I got impatient. I didn't even realize he spawned, dude. He's alive for like 60 seconds. So maybe like in those 60 seconds, he could theoretically head over here, but he's not going to. He's not going to summon again, is he? Okay, he is going to summon it again. That's not good. We're going to snipe this chest down here. Let's do it. Let's go. Really? Really? That's it? No, no. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. I promise nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Hey, buddy. This is the toughest Minecraft mob, everyone. Strongest boss in all of Minecraft right here. Ooh, yeah. You tell that rock. Yeah. I bet those stairs are going to be really upset about that. I've never seen Deep Slate more scared of its life before. <laughs> this is fantastic content right here. You've been alive for several minutes now. Can I just hop down and get my loot? He's triggered by the bass. It won't die. Oh, oh. This is Hardcore Minecraft, these are 20 stroker boxes, and for the next 200 days, I'm building 20 automatic farms to fill each one, starting with... The cobblestone farm, filling up the first shulker box. As the video progresses, each farm gets more difficult to build, and I even almost die building the- Next up is the slime farm, and I need to find a swamp. Okay, this should work. And I just need to grab a few materials, and build the farm. Oh wait, I found a frog. Don't go anywhere, buddy. You can stay right in this boat. I'm really glad I found that because I want frog lights. And I'm gonna build this one out of andesite. Of course, I need other materials. I don't know how a block of andesite would store the items. And for convenience, I'm gonna build this farm on the nether roof. Luckily, I found another frog in the same swamp as before and spent the next four hours trying to breed these guys, realizing they could jump out, making the walls higher, rebuilding the iron golem section, redoing the minecart system multiple times, and no, what you see isn't even the final product. It wasn't until many farms later that I realized I can't have three powered rails right next to each other on the comparator side because that stops the minecarts. <sighs> this farm could have been done in like an hour, but I don't know how to play this game. I've only built three farms and I'm already out of wood. Again. So next up is a wood farm. I think it works. Wait, I'm in 1.20. Does this farm work with cherry trees? Oh, finally, I found one. Wait, where's the rest of it? Oh, it's because I loaded part of this before I updated to 1.20. <sighs> I'm just going to take these. At least the farm works with these trees. Well, for the most part. The tree farm's great, but I don't have any bone meal to run it. Luckily, there's a farm for that, and I'm gonna need a lot of this cobblestone. And just so it's near the other farms, I think this small ocean area is a good spot to build it. I gotta say, although it took a while, I've built this farm so many times that it was super easy. Although I just now realized that even though I built this farm to get bone meal and gunpowder, I'm building more farms later that also provide bone meal and gunpowder. I did not think this through. Switching gears, I decided to tackle the pumpkin, melon, carrot, and potato farms. Since these are all crops that could be traded with villagers, I wanted them to be near each other. First by building the pumpkin and melon farm, using hopper minecarts to pick up the items and funneling them into a few chests. I waterlogged some leaves like I did with a cobblestone generator to hydrate the soil, then planted the seeds, alternating between pumpkin and melon, then finishing out the farm with some observers and pistons, and topping it off with some redstone. Moving on, I began building the carrot and potato farm, using the previous farm as an outline. This farm uses villagers to harvest the crops, so I had to put down a composter and a bed on each level, making sure to leave a spot for the villager to stand on when he gets out of the bed. To collect the items on each side, I use hoppers and hopper minecarts that will send the items all the way down to some double chests. Honestly, the worst part about building this farm was the villagers, since I had to bring them here all the way from the breeder I built in the previous episode. Next up is a trip to the end, because I'm building, you guessed it, a honey farm. To build this farm, I need a lot of beehives. I spent days and days 
and days breeding the bees. I actually started this process before I built the pumpkin and melon farm, but getting all the bees I need from just four nests took way longer than I expected. At least I finished the honeycomb decoration in my house though, but after 20 days of breeding bees, I finally had enough to make the farm. Gonna be honest here, I don't really want to work with bees again. This farm took way too long to make. Good thing that farm's done because I keep running out of rockets and this little sugar cane field is not cutting it. But with my newly acquired honey blocks and some other redstone stuff, I can use flying machines to collect the sugar cane for me. And I think I'll build the farm here. And I just had to place some hopper minecarts here, push them a bit as if they insulted my mother, suffocate them with honey blocks. Okay, wait, this took a weird turn. Anyways, I just got to plant a bunch of sugar cane, build the redstone to send the flying machine back and go. I'm so smart. Oh, oh, yes, a real cherry biome. I've been looking for a frozen... I've been looking for a frozen ocean so I can get ice for the next farm, but I'm gonna get a screenshot of these cords. There we go, I found one. This is so satisfying. Wait, hold on, I wanna loot this. Man, you suck. I got it! We're almost halfway done, and now it's time for the toughest one yet, the stacking raid farm. Even though I'm using it to get totems of undying, which will help me live longer in my hardcore world, I still run the risk of dying actually building the farm, since this farm involves some of the most powerful mobs in the game, which means it's time to cue the action music. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Here's the real music. And now I have my very first totem of undying. I know, I'm so special. Oh, and I made a custom texture for it too. It's like a green hardcore heart. I won't use it for now since it makes everything all weird and pixelated in the distance, but let me know what you think of it and I'll see if I can get that fixed. But that can wait for a future episode since I need to make my way back to the nether to build one of the most well-renowned farms, ENXO4's Wither Skeleton Farm. I know everyone has seen this farm before and it's a really simple build, so I won't harp on it too much. Honestly, the hardest part was finding a suitable fortress and getting the nether brick, and that was still pretty easy. And now the Wither Skeleton Farm is complete. Oh, that was cool. You see how I zoomed out? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a great YouTuber. And now I can build the other wither farm, this time for wither roses. But first, I want to kill a few of these guys. Honestly, I'm not sure how much I'll be using wither roses, so a simple farm like this should work. With this setup, all I have to do is hold right click and the snow golems will get killed by the wither. And then I can go down and safely collect the wither roses and the snowballs to make more golems. A very small and simple farm. You know, I completely forgot about this enchanted golden apple I got last episode. Since it's the first one I've ever gotten, I guess I could put it with the rest of the relics here. And I guess I could put a nether star here too since I killed my first wither. I plan on doing some big projects in the future, and if they're anything like my starter house, I'm gonna need some concrete. You thought I was could say obsidian, didn't you? But converting concrete by hand is tedious, to say the least. But with a few redstone materials and some editing motivation, I was quickly able to build this concrete converter that pushes the concrete into a blast chamber, where it's then collected into the double chest at the bottom. Although I'm not really sure it counts as a farm, uh, I, uh, yeah, it's a farm, I promise. Yeah, yeah, it's an automatic concrete farm. I almost died. With crops on the mind, I might as well finish the last crop farm of the video, the bamboo farm, because this is out of place and I need it automated. Just like the sugarcane farm, this bamboo farm uses flying machines to collect the items. The difference here though is that it uses a railway system to pick them up, just like the pumpkin and melon farm, which of course means I need to go back to the nether to get more gold. I wish I had a gold farm. After finding a decent spot to build it, I started off by making a large cobblestone platform for the minecarts, placing barrels, chests, and the few hoppers I had on me. Believe it or not, this small iron farm hasn't been producing enough iron. So while I was waiting for more iron, I did some of the redstone, placed some rails, and started work on the second layer that the bamboo will be planted on. And unlike the sugarcane farm, this flying machine was really simple. So all I had left to do was finish the redstone. I tried using the same hopper clock as the sugarcane farm, but it wasn't until later that I realized that this system didn't work since I didn't have the correct pulse 
length. In the meantime, I planted the bamboo and built up the glass walls, finishing up the farm by making some changes to the collection system. And just like the frog-like farm, I promise this redstone gets fixed eventually, just not right now. I'm clearly not good with redstone, so next up on the list is a very simple wool farm. Like I said earlier, I have future plans for this series that require a lot of blocks, including wool. So I bred up some sheep and put each into one of the 16 holes. Then I collected all 16 colored dyes and dyed each sheep, quickly marking the small automatic wool farm complete. With three quarters of the farms done, it's time to enter the final stage. From this point on, each farm becomes bigger than the last, and for this next farm, I need to conquer an ocean monument. Thankfully, the design I'm using doesn't require me to drain the ocean monument. Otherwise, this farm would have been a whole video on its own. I just had to build a portal in the center, clean up the top of the structure, place a whole bunch of dirt so I could get the water streams in place, build the collection area on the nether roof, almost die while placing the soul sand. I told you every mob wants to kill me. I mean, seriously, what is this crap, bro? I'm about to die. I'm just gonna grab another totem just in case. Okay, let's try this again. Oh my gosh, dude, I can't. Okay, I'm scared now. Okay, new plan. I decided to go home and make some invisibility potions so the guardians wouldn't see me. Unfortunately, I have to take off my armor for this to work, so this leaves me completely vulnerable. But since I still had a couple totems on me, I knew I'd be fine. Honestly, the most annoying part now was drowning since I no longer had respiration. Couldn't you have just made some water breathing potions? Yes. Yes, I could have. And with that, the guardian farm is done. Let me just build this AFK platform, get rid of the dirt, and now look at all of them go. Yes, die, all of you. You're the worst mob to deal with. I hate Hate you. Next up is a farm we all knew was coming, Ill Mangles Gold Farm. This is probably the most famous design out there, and with gold farms being one of the most iconic farms in Minecraft, there's no surprise why I'm building it. I've built this farm in my survival worlds before, so I was prepared for the immense amount of magma blocks I had to gather. Seriously, I had to get so many magma blocks. Well, I got all the materials, including 96 minecarts. I did tell you that I AFK'd overnight after building the Guardian Farm, right? And since the Wither Skeleton Farm is so far away from my portal, I might as well put another farm along this path too. So now it's time for everyone's favorite thing, another time lapse. Finally, after a few hours, the gold farm is done. This upgraded storage area should handle the drops just fine. And now I just have to hit one with a snowball. Uh, like, like that, maybe? Okay, maybe not. Well, good thing I have a trident. There we go, the XP is flowing. And I can repair all my tools. Is this cruel? This gold farm's great, but it wouldn't be that useful if it weren't for the next farm, the bartering farm. When given a gold ingot, a piglin will give you one of these items, including gravel, quartz, enderpearls, blackstone, you get the idea. And since I conveniently built the gold farm near a crimson forest, it should be easy for me to spawn some piglins on the nether roof and start trading with them. But before I do that, maybe I should build the farm first. And now I just need some piglins to spawn up here. Oh, here's one. Just go in the hole. Thank you. And take this pumpkin. And that's one piglin down. 31 more to go. A few inches later. And finally, the bartering farm is done. Look at the storage system. It's huge. And like I said, it's right next to the gold farm. So I'll have all the gold I need to use this. All right, piglins, you ready to trade? Okay, they're throwing their items. And off they go. And since I use blue ice, the items seem to be making their way to the end, no problem. Oh yeah, I gotta get rid of the spawning platform too. This farm was pretty big, but pretty easy to build. I'm feeling good about this. Next up is the ghast farm. And thanks to the previous farms, I have just about everything I need to build it. Cobblestone, frog lights, hot hoppers, wither roses, but what I don't have and what I knew I'd eventually run out of is obsidian. Look guys, it's just like the first episode all over again. At least this time I have a beacon.
well that's an hour of my life i'm not getting back and just like the previous two farms i'm gonna build this one along the same path since there's another soul sand valley here i started building the first layer of the gas farm quickly realizing i had nowhere near enough frog lights but after even more afking seriously i spent so much time afking in this video i soon had enough to continue building the farm besides giving me a reason to have even more obsidian this gas farm plays an important role for the next farm but more on that later just like the gold farm this farm wasn't complicated to build just tedious especially since i need chickens in a boat not exactly something i expected to need for a farm i just have to build an afk platform up here and i should be all set wait why does the biome say basalt deltas no no i meant to build it on this side of the torches but I built it on that side of the torches. This was the absolute worst case scenario. It literally took me over two hours to break and replace the entire farm. And I had already spent over three hours getting everything and building it the first time. Now I had to do it all over again, just a few blocks away. I'm not cut out for this game. Well, the farm's done, again. What if I fly all the way up here to this singular frog light? I can now say the farm is finally finished. I spent this entire video with one goal in mind, filling up 20 shulker boxes. But in doing so, I've kind of run out of them. Which is why the last farm of the video is the shulker farm. After gathering materials for the final farm, I made my way to the end to kill the dragon four more times, and definitely not popping another totem in the process. The reason I did this was to create new gateway portals, since the one I have now was nowhere near an end city. Luckily, one of them was close to a new end city, meaning I could build the farm nearby and easily bring a shulker to it later. But before I could do that, I just had to... And with that out of the way, I picked a spot and began building the final automatic farm of today's video. And with that, all the farms are now complete. Starting with a simple cobblestone farm, I not only made the savannah even uglier, but also conquered the ocean, nether, and end, building farms to keep me alive and serve me well for future builds. With a few close calls and some speculation about my intelligence, I can proudly say I have survived 289 days in hardcore Minecraft. It's great having all these boxes, but they take up so much inventory space. Meh, I don't need them anyways. This is Hardcore Minecraft, and this is the End Dimension, which is honestly pretty boring. So today, I'm transforming the End, building my own End Island that has custom biomes never seen before on YouTube. But before I do anything else, I need to kill a few Ender Dragons, so I'm sorry, Enderman. Now I can craft a bunch of End Crystals, and I'll need these for later. Time for the first dragon. This might take a while. Yep, I'm drag clicking to collect dragon's breath. Glad my time playing Bedwars was put to good use. Anyways, now that the dragons are dead, I can move on with the absolute worst process of this entire video, which is getting rid of all these pillars. But luckily, before I killed the under dragons, I actually had gotten some maxed out diamond pickaxes, and this is just so I don't have to worry about repairing them as I move along. Let's see how long the first one takes. Okay, that took like an hour, and that was probably the smallest one out of all these, so this is gonna take a while. Okay, that took about 70 Minecraft days, but at least the pillars are gone. And if you were wondering why I didn't build an obsidian farm last episode, this was why. Oh, wait, I forgot to get rid of the bedrock. Okay, now the pillars are gone. Luckily, getting rid of the end island is a lot easier than it seems thanks to this TNT flying machine design by Razeworks. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below, but basically what it does is it drops TNT down a line, and then when it reaches the end, it slides over a block and repeats the process. Without this machine, this video wouldn't have been possible. I mean, seriously, did you really expect me to mine all of this by hand? Well, I guess the machine couldn't do all the work for me. And now, 
Okay, I won't lie, this looks really cool. But it's about to become so much cooler. Because stage one of building my end island requires about 13 shulker boxes of magenta concrete to build a giant hemisphere as the base of the build. To craft concrete, I need sand, gravel, and dye, which in this case is magenta dye. And that requires red, white, and blue dye. Luckily, I had some gravel in the bartering farm storage, and after running the bartering farm some more, I flew around the nether and overworld until I had enough gravel for all the concrete. The sand was really easy. I just found a desert nearby using chunk base and abused my shovel until I had enough. As for the magenta dye, it wasn't as easy. I ended up building a flower farm in front of my house only to realize that it was in the wrong biome. So then I rebuilt it behind my house in the right biome and then ran out of bone meal. So I just sat here at the wither skeleton farm for whatever, you don't care. But then I crafted the concrete and ran the converter and finally had enough to build the dome. Okay, I just have to let lava flow down like this. And while that's flowing, I'll get rid of this obsidian. And I can let the water flow down and build the first layer and put the shulker boxes down. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, looks like I'll need to build a mob switch. I was going to build one later, but I have to build up 65 layers of this thing. And I can't do that if endermen are constantly in my way and trying to kill me. <laughs> So I built up this mob switch by Kelp MC and made a railway system from the villager breeder through the nether to the end portal and down to the mob switch. I wish I could say moving the villagers here was easy, but I had gotten one zombie here, moved my first villager there, then the zombie despawned so I had to get another one, and then I spent the next few hours moving villagers in place. Some of them lived, some of them died, yet all of them managed to make me question my sanity. But eventually, all 70 villagers had been traded with and converted into zombie villagers, meaning I could finally build the base of my new end island. Okay, wow, this is huge. But it's not done yet because I need to put a farm in here. And what farm would I put in the end? That's right, it's the honey farm. Yeah, I made the same joke two episodes in a row. Deal with it. Anyways, I put the honey farm here and extended the storage for it. Like I'm ever gonna have three double chests of honey bottles. But to be honest, I don't really like where the mob switch is right now because it's not centered to the dome. So, oh, look at that. It moved all on its own. That's crazy. I guess I could finally get rid of this flying machine, huh? And here's the last few blocks and oh wow that looks crazy okay i'm getting excited for this as you know i want to put the custom biomes on top of the dome so to make the process easier i'm gonna put down a layer of dirt so i have something to stand on when i'm building them i started off with three shulker boxes of dirt but that just wasn't enough so i went back and got five more boxes of dirt which was just the right amount to fill in the entire circle seriously this thing is huge and since i have so much of it i used obsidian to mark out the 12 sections where each biome will go which means i can finally start the first biome on day 499. I've already spent over 200 days on this project. The first biome I want to build is what I call the lush mangrove biome. Basically, it'll be like a mangrove swamp, but instead of all brown and yicky, it'll be a bit more green. Believe it or not, but to build a mangrove biome, I actually need mangrove wood. Shocker, I know. Oh, what? There's a thunderstorm happening. Hold on. I wonder if I could get my first mob head. I mean, other than a wither skeleton, obviously. All right, just got to charge this creeper. Uh, all right, I've got it this time. Okay, that was a bad idea. Did I get it? I did, awesome. Look at me, I'm a flying creeper. Getting back on track, I organized all the materials for the biome and got to work on the ground, bone mealing moss to replace the dirt that was already there. I want each biome to feel unique and detailed, and part of that is not having the ground be completely flat. So I destroyed almost all the moss just to place it back one block higher. Yeah, I'm smart. Here comes the interesting part though, as I bone meal the mangrove trees and strip the logs to make them red. The red bark is much more vibrant than the brown, so it helps the biome feel a bit more lush. Once I was happy with the trees, I started detailing the ground, replacing the moss with patches of coarse dirt, normal dirt, grass, and mud. Then I dotted around some mangrove roots, added some smaller custom trees, and finished out the biome by adding some mangrove logs with a few leaves on them. I'm honestly surprised how well this turned out. I'll admit that I thought it was going to be a bit more vibrant than this, but I mean, this is the end. I can't really do anything about that. But other than that, I'm happy with this. Let's move on to the next one. Next is what I call the land of enchantment, and I'm basically turning this biome into a giant enchantment area. It'll have enchantment tables, bookshelves, chisel bookshelves, barrels, I should probably stop talking before I spoil everything. For the floor, I decided to use a mixture of blue concrete, blue wool, and lapis. This helps texture the ground and saves me time by not having to trade as much. I still had to take a trip to the raid farm for more emeralds to trade, and uh... I don't know what's going on with this storage system, so I'll have to fix that at some point. Anyways, I got more gravel, made more concrete, converted it, and grabbed the other materials for the biome. I don't think I'll have enough concrete for the whole thing, so I'm just gonna go one section at a time. Well, that's all the blue concrete I had. How much did that cover? Not enough. Maybe if I put some of these decorations in place, I can take the ones that are hidden underneath. The idea for these is that I want to have some enchantment ring things. So it's like there's a bunch of enchantment setups everywhere. And then these barrels would be like for storing books and stuff. Oh yeah, I wanted to put the chisel bookshelves here too. So it's like whoever used these setups took the books out of the bookshelves and actually like used them to enchant. Yeah, I'm, I'm so cool. Then I can texture the floor and... Okay, I need more concrete.
All right, that's looking good so far, but there's one more thing I want to add, and that's candles. I've never actually used candles before, but I decided to put some on the bookshelves, barrels, and even in the air. I mean, come on, floating candles in an enchantment biome? That's cool, right? Time for some big ol' shrooms, and by that, I mean custom fungi, since just building a regular mushroom biome would be pretty boring. I just need to find a mushroom island, which I'm using chunk base for. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, wait, I, I just passed it somehow. Is this... Seriously, we're doing this again? I swear this happens every episode. Anyways, I found a real mushroom island nearby and grabbed the mycelium and mushroom from it. Then I made my way to the Badlands biome, set up a beacon, and mined a bunch of terracotta to use for the custom mushrooms. Back in the end, I placed down mycelium for the ground, making a hill that's just a little bit higher than the last one. Then I went ahead and planted the red and brown mushrooms and collected some mushroom stems to use for the custom ones. Okay, now I have to figure out how to build a mushroom. It should be pretty easy since I'm just trying to keep it similar to the red ones. Uh, yeah, this shape should work. And I just gotta add the white concrete for the little dots and yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Time to do it for the others. And I just gotta place the last blocks here and done. And that's the mushroom biome. I tried to vary the height and shape as much as I could, but mushrooms aren't exactly easy to detail when they're smaller like this. Not to say that the build is small, trust me, it's not. That last biome's pretty ugly, so I'm gonna liven it up and build a custom flower forest. I could just go to a flower forest and only use what's there, but I wanna take it just a little bit further. And I'm gonna need more flowers. Using my leftover mycelium, I outlined the shape of the terrain. Then I went back and covered it all with moss, just like I did with the lush mangrove biome. Once that was done, I placed down a bunch of flowers and tried to put them and patches to make it seem more natural. Then I planted some azalea trees since it's the only tree that has flowers in its leaves. And to finish the biome, I dotted around some flowering azaleas and put leaves on a few of them to make it look like the trees are still growing. And yeah, that's so much nicer than the previous one. Not to say the mushrooms were bad, it's just this is so much easier to look at. Nature's getting a bit boring, and I really like that enchantment biome I did earlier, so I'm gonna do something similar and build a custom redstone biome. Basically, the grounds can be scattered with pretty much all the redstone materials I own, which I'm sure won't affect me in the future in any way. And it can't be a redstone biome without the ground being, you know, red. And I'm just gonna take all my other redstone materials and some red wool for the ground. Oh, and the sugar cane farm broke again earlier, by the way. So I'm giving up on that and using those materials for this. To outline the terrain, I'm using leftover leaves because leaves are definitely a redstone block. Now I'll put in the red terracotta. And I think I'm just gonna put the redstone materials on the first layer before I build up the other layers, just so I can get a better idea of what I'm doing. It'd be cool if I had like some functional redstone in this thing. So maybe I could add like a hopper clock here. Yeah, that's good. And maybe this could be like a sticky piston pushing some slime with some honey blocks. As for everything else, I'm just gonna dot it around. I'm not sure what a redstone biome's ground should look like, so I'm just gonna put some red wool and redstone blocks here mixed in with a terracotta, and I'll finish it off by locking this repeater. Cool, one layer done. You get the idea, making a small hill, decorating it with redstone circuits and random items, and it's done. Okay, I know I just flew through that really- Okay, I know I just flew through that, but that looks a lot cooler than I thought it would. Yeah, that adds a lot to the build. The red contrasts really well with the green and blue. Next up is what I'm calling the Dead Waste Biome. I watched Oppenheimer recently, again, and I thought about how they were concerned about blowing up the world and thought that would be a good fit after building the Redstone Biome, because TNT is a thing. Before I build it though, I gotta repair my tools, so I can get a bunch of dirt and sit here at the Wither Skeleton Farm, because I need bone meal for the tree farm, and I need some dead bushes. Like I said, the inspiration behind this biome is nuclear fallout, more specifically specifically one that happened in a forest. So I'm picturing everything dried up and dead. Starting with the ground, I used a mix of coarse dirt, path blocks, and regular dirt to make it seem like all the grass had died, then followed up with some leafless trees. In a real explosion, all the trees would be on fire, but then they'd burn up and disappear. So I think having trees with no leaves can simulate the charred tree look. I also made sure to add some fallen trees as if whatever caused this explosion knocked some trees over. It looked a little too monochromatic, so I went back and added some leaves, then added the dead bushes, and finished out the biome with some leftover mangrove roots to make it look like the leaves were actively drying up. I want each biome to feel like it has substance when you walk through it and tell a bit of a story, which I think this biome does perfectly. Before I move on to the next biome, I want to finally do something about the center platform since right now it's just an empty hole. And to match the big dome, I think it should have a similar color. Luckily, crimson wood is purple, so it should work really well for this. Starting off with some magenta glass, I filled in the circle up top and left some spots around the portal for ladders to go, using crimson trapdoors to support them. Then I placed a ring of magenta terracotta on the grass circle in the center, which, come to think of it, I don't actually think I showed building earlier. Anyways, I got rid of the grass only to put it back because I realized I needed it to put down the crimson wood. This whole project has a lot of mixed blocks, so having the center platform be only made up of one type of block would have felt underwhelming. To finish the platform, I added a ring of crimson slabs around it and then a ring of crimson trapdoors around that, then put a ring of crimson slabs under the obsidian and finally some crafting tables in the center under the ladders. Yeah, that's so much nicer. Now I can actually walk in the center without falling, and I'm still able to access the honey farm from inside the dome. I really like building the flower forest, and since 1.20 introduced the cherry trees and bamboo planks, I want to build my own cherry grove with bamboo mixed in, which means I need more materials. And while I'm here, I meant to do this last episode, but... Yeah, music corner.
which I'll probably never use. <clears throat> For this bottom, I wanted to add a pond in the middle, so I outlined where it will go and filled it in with dirt, then made the entire ground out of moss like I've done before. Moss has such a vibrant color, so I like using it whenever I can since grass looks pretty dull in the end. That also lets me place regular dirt for texturing the floor since there's no grass to spread to the dirt, meaning I can save on some coarse dirt. After filling in the pond with water, I planted the cherry trees, which was much more tedious than I anticipated since the trees kept looking very blocky and uninspired. I eventually took a break and decorated the pond, only to soon realize that I needed bone meal to grow the bamboo, so I went back to the wither skeleton farm again, but eventually I grew all the bamboo, finished the pond, and got the trees to look good, but something was still missing. Wait, can I bone with the petals? Yes, yes I can, awesome. Now I can go around and plant like a dozen stacks of these. There's still a lot of empty space, so I'm gonna plant some azalea trees in too, kinda like as if the azalea trees eventually grow into cherry trees, or they could just be azalea trees, whatever, it looks good either way. And now the biome's done, and it's looking exactly how I imagined it. Yeah, that adds good height variation too, since the last couple biomes have been a bit flat. Now it's time for a biome I've been really excited to build, a pine forest. Everything up to this point has been completely new to me, but this biome is a bit more in my comfort zone since I have some idea how to make small pine trees and texture the ground. And for that, I'm also gonna need some acacia wood, andesite, some other stuff. Now let me just out Outline the ground and fill it in with a mix of path blocks, coarse dirt, gravel. Okay, maybe just cobblestone on the bottom layer and a mix of gravel and cobble for the rest. With the ground textured, I moved on to building the trees. I'm new to building custom trees and used some tutorials to help me build them, so thanks to Braylon and Flip for the inspiration. I'll have links to their tutorials in the description below. All right, looking good so far, just gotta add some rocks. Now I'm hoping that using a mix of acacia wood, andesite, stone, and cobblestone should let me make the rocks look a bit more natural. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Let me just add a few more of these along here. And I'm just gonna add a couple more trees and done. Walking through each biome is so cool because it feels like I'm not even in the end anymore. I mean, as long as I ignore the endless void around me. Oh, can I fly through? Oh, nailed it. I'll be honest, the next biome is sort of a filler biome, but one I've wanted to try building on my own someday, which is the coral reef. Since I built a guardian farm last episode, I decided to use a mix of the different prismarine blocks as the ground. As for the corals, I used a leftover mix of terracotta blocks and tried to replicate what coral looks like from the actual biome. This style is way out of my element like the mushrooms were earlier, but I tried my best to add variation and make them as three-dimensional as possible. And finally, I replaced some of the ground with waterlogged slabs and put down patches of coral fans I got earlier from the actual coral reef. I wish I could have used coral blocks here too, but for now, terracotta and sea pickles will have to do. And you know what? This turned out better than I thought it would. I'm happy with this. Sticking with the tropical theme, this next biome is an oasis biome, which will have a pond like the cherry grove, as well as some palm trees, which, come to think of it, I don't think I've actually ever built before. For the ground, I'm using a mix of sand and sandstone, meaning I had to take a trip back to the mining desert. As for the palm trees, I need jungle wood and, and leaves. Alright, that should be enough. Whoa, look at that, that was pretty cool. But I am gonna repair this elytra because I don't wanna die if that happens again. Once my elytra was fixed, I built the base of the biome with a mix of sand and sandstone and added coarse dirt for the pond area to give the illusion that the ground gradually gets drier as you move away from the water. Speaking of the water, I decorated it pretty much the same as I did in the cherry grove, bone milling under the water and using some green glass and flower pots to make custom plants. Like I said earlier, I'm new to building palm trees even though they're supposed to be like really easy to build. So I'm following some tutorials by Ather Media, Biggs87X and a cucumber, which will all be linked in the description below. Let me just add some cacti, dead bushes, and yeah, that looks great. Oasis biome complete. But meme, I want to go to the plains biome. But honey, we had the plains biome at home. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm building. I just need some leaves, gravel, and cactus for some green dye. Oh, a desert temple. Ooh, dune armor trims. Interesting. Huh. There is two villages near each other, good to know. And another temple, with more armor trims. Back at the house, I gathered some grass blocks before converting some more concrete and making terracotta. And then in the end, I started working on the ground. Instead of mixing the blocks like I have been in the other biomes, I wanted to focus the grass on a small hill, then dissipate it, transitioning into the concrete and terracotta. Which means now I can build the trees, with a twist of course. So instead of birch logs, I'm gonna use some bone blocks and surround them with birch leaves like this so it's like a regular Minecraft tree. Honestly, the weirdest thing is that they don't look weird, at least not from far away. But what will look weird is the oak trees, because it's Instead of oak leaves, I'm using spruce leaves. Okay, dude, that looks, that's just wrong. Once I committed more abominations and planted some flowers, I moved on to building a village house using stripped oak and regular stone instead of the usual cobblestone and regular oak. Yeah, this really is cursed, isn't it? Anyways, the rest of the house was pretty normal and I added some decorations on the inside. The right side of the house was looking pretty empty, so I added a little campfire area with spruce slabs, signs, and trap doors. <laughs> then I went back and built a few more trees and finished the biome by putting a magenta bed in the house. As stupid as this biome is, I honestly really like it, which, probably probably says a lot about me, doesn't it? Before I build the last 
bottom of the video and complete the build, I had to do something about the edge. Right now, the biomes just kind of conveniently stop at the concrete, but I want to add a trim around the whole build so it actually looks like the biomes are contained by it. It should help the build pop a little more and also make it look more natural because everything about this video has been natural so far. I want to build it out of smooth quartz and since I ran the bartering farm for gravel earlier, I should have... Yeah, that should be enough. Let me just smell all of it real quick. There we go. And I'll need some wool. Oh, I committed a drive-by shearing. If it was an orange sheep, it'd be a drive-by edge shearing. The trim's design is pretty simple. It's just some white carpet on top of the magenta concrete, then quartz slabs on the outside of the concrete with stairs about every seven blocks topped off with a ring of slabs. I wanted it to be simple enough to not take away from the focus of the build while also having some variation so it doesn't look like some blocky flat line. And now it's time for the last biome of the video. Everything has led up to this moment and the final biome of the video is going to be the honey biome. Okay, hear me out. In the book of Exodus, God tells Moses to lead the Israelites to a land of milk and honey, and I thought it'd be cool to build my own version with a river of milk and a land of honey. For the milk, I'm gonna use white concrete and glass since I obviously can't use actual milk, and I'll use yellow concrete for the honey. Oh, wait, I just had a great idea. Are there any? Yeah, yeah, there's a bee nest here, awesome. And another, and another. I didn't think I'd ever need to enter this room again, but here I am, getting more bees. I think I have trauma from last episode. With all the materials gathered, I started off by marking the path where the river will go, then filling it in with a mix of the white concrete and glass. Then I moved on to the land, which I made out of yellow concrete and yellow concrete powder. I ended up going back to the river to touch up the edges, replacing some of the concrete with concrete powder to keep it from looking like some artificial border was there. Heading down to the honey farm, I made honey and honeycomb blocks and started building custom trees, using honeycombs as the base and a mix of yellow terracotta and honey blocks as the leaves. Obviously, honey trees don't exist in real life, so I used the pine and palm trees from earlier as inspiration, replicating the shape and mixing in whatever honey blocks I had. Well, this is looking yellow, so I'm going to add some moss blocks in here to put some flowers on. Actually, maybe I should replace some of it with grass blocks so I can bone meal it. And that's the final flower. And of course, how could I have a honey biome without bees? Uh, hey, little buddy. You liking the flowers? I should probably breed more bees in here too, since I didn't bring in that many. I mean, the rest of them are in the honey farm, but, uh, I'm actually going to put some rose bushes in the flower patches too, and, uh, Wait, that's it, isn't it? I'm done. I can clean up the shulker boxes for the last time. I'm done with the build. Wait, look at all the biomes around me. This is crazy. And that's the story of my end island transformation. Starting from an oversized birthday cake, I cut down the obsidian pillars, cleared the end island, built a massive upside down dome, and topped it off with 12 amazing custom biomes. This project took a month to complete, by the way, so drop a like if you enjoyed. And with that, I'll see you all in my next episode. This is Hardcore Minecraft, and these are villagers. Minecraft's most annoying mob! But they're useful, so I'm building a giant villager farm complete with a trading hall, villager breeder, crop farms. Actually, that's about it. Alright, that's enough of that. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Actually, speaking of the totem, now's a great time to show you guys the new pack for it. Um... <laughs> Okay, okay, we're gonna, no, we don't need to turn it sideways. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a that's a fantastic start to this episode. So last episode, this farm broke, and I kind of used all the redstone from it to build my redstone biome. Which, yeah, probably that probably wasn't the best idea. And since it broke, I obviously need a new sugarcane farm. And I know I built these farms over here a couple episodes ago, but I don't really have a use for all this yet. And as far as the melon farm goes, oh, oh, yeah, that's not good. Dang, maybe I should have built a melon biome. But like I said, I don't really have a use for all this yet, which is why I'm going to build a giant villager here because they trade crops for... You, you get the idea. And this build will have spots for a new trading hall, breeder, crop farms, just so everything's in the same spot. Because I really don't want to fly back and forth. And honestly, the current system doesn't have enough storage anyways. But if I'm building a new storage system, I need a lot of iron, which I have, surprisingly. As for everything else, I have a lot of material gathering to do. And with that, all the materials I need for the build are now gathered, which took a lot longer than I thought it would, but it, 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 it's fine. And the spot I want to build it is right about here. And the reason I marked out this spot is because it's centered between four chunks, and I want my build to be, well, with it, within the four chunks. And I'm hoping that by doing this, it'll load and unload all at the same time, so that way I don't have to worry about, like, part of the farm breaking or whatever. Not sure if it'll make much of a difference, but I'm just going to do it anyways. Now let me just go ahead and put down all the shulker boxes. There we go. And now we can officially move on to stage one of the build, the exterior. Let me just start this off by doing...
But now that the feet are done, I... Yeah, I built feet. I'm gonna build up the coat next, and I don't really want to do a whole big block by block thing because I actually want to upload sometime this year. So we'll let's we'll head into a replay. Yeah, replay is super. Ah! The turtles. And now finally the villager is done, which means it's time to move on to stage two, setting up the villagers. Heading up to the top, I filled in the floor with oak planks and started outlining where each villager will go in the trading hall. I want the interior to resemble the village, so I'm mostly using oak wood on the inside. Of course I say that, but you can see that I'm also using bamboo. Anyways, I built a new villager breeder above the trading area and finished the ceiling with more oak, bamboo, and glass. Oh, and I planted some potatoes. Keep this in mind for later. The idea now is that I have to go all the way up here to the top of the villager breeder, and I just have to do... You know what? That could, that could work. So now all I have to do is build a giant minecart track from here down to there. Okay, the minecart track is done, and now I just need some coal. And hopefully, if I can get a villager in here, I should be able to push the villagers up to the breeder with a furnace minecart. And then when we're at the top here, you should just be pushed into the breeder. Yep, awesome. And now I just have to repeat this until both the breeder and the trading hall are full. Why do I do this every episode? And that is the final villager, which means I can get rid of this and that. And let me just go ahead and put these up here. And I should probably also get rid of this rail line before anyone gets mad about it. All right, now the rail line is gone and we can move on to stage three, which is the crop farms. Like I said earlier, I don't really like this system right here anymore. And I kind of, it, it, it just needs an upgrade. I mean, seriously, like all this time and it's only made that much. I mean... It's good, but it's not nearly fast enough. Not to mention the pumpkin and melon farm, which is it's producing a lot. It's fine. But again, it could use an upgrade. Oh, that looks so weird. Uh. Before I build the pumpkin farm, I'm going to start making the water elevator that'll take me up to the trading hall. So let me just... Now this is in place, and now I can actually start working on the pumpkin and melon farm. And I'm just going to reuse the same design I built before, so I need a layer of dirt down here. And it'll be five blocks wide, so it touches the side of the elevator. And I should probably light this up so mobs don't spawn in here. Then on the fifth block out, I'll put a leaf here, and same for the other side. And we fill each of these with water. Then I gotta fill the soil, because that's how plants work. And then I just gotta put frog lights on top of these like this. And then I put down the pumpkin seeds. And then of course comes the observers. Now the observers have to be looking at the seed like that. Wait, maybe I could put a trap door here like this and yeah, there we go. And now I can put observers above every seed. Then I need to come down here and place the pistons. Okay, I think that's all the pistons in place. <laughs> and then using the same trap door, I can also come up here and put in the redstone, which was really easy. I'm also going to put glass here so nothing flies out. Then I can come down here and build the platform where the rails will go with a line of redstone blocks down the middle. And then I'll put in the rails. Now, in theory, I should be able to put a rail here and then a hopper should be able to go right here. And a powered rail can go right there. And then I could put a comparator right here, which will power a block, which will have a redstone torch on it, which will power a block. So I need a block there too. I need to put a redstone torch right here and then a block here and then a repeater right here with a comparator right here. So now every time this hopper is filled with items, the rail will power off, meaning the hopper minecart can't move. And I gotta make sure I actually finish off this side because if I don't, that'd be kind of bad. There we go. And of course, this would all be completely pointless if I didn't actually have the hopper minecart, which goes right here. And if I did everything properly, this block will also serve as what stops the minecart from going off the tracks on this end. You can see over there, that block stops the minecart from going off the track. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So that block over there is actually going to have a redstone torch under it. But of course, to do that, I actually need to build the side of the farm. So, and done. And it's also day 600, which is kind of cool. Ah, oh, there we go. That's pretty cool. I mean, from down here, it's, it's, just lines of red, but one farm is down, so that's cool. Ow. How did- Huh? 
Sweet. Now I don't have to worry about flying up here. The next farm I'm going to build is the sugarcane farm, which I do not think I have enough pistons for. As far as the sugarcane farms go, they're actually going to be right here and here. Starting off with the left farm, I built a water stream to funnel the items into what will eventually be the collection system. Then I made a staircase out of leaves, placing dirt next to it, which is where the sugarcane will eventually go. I then waterlocked the leaves and began putting the pistons in place, with observers above them and some redstone out the back. What's interesting about this farm is that it follows the shape of the build, and also I made it two layers high, which wasn't the easiest thing since I kept messing up the placement of the observers. I then finished replicating it on the other side, lit up the inside of the farm, finished the water streams, and planted the sugarcane, marking half of the farm done. Now I just gotta do the other side. And there we go, both Sugar King farms are now complete, and I slabbed up the area just to make sure that no mobs could spawn here. I mean, I don't think they're gonna spawn here anyways, but just in case. And as you can see, the Sugar King farm is already working pretty well. But there is one more farm I have to put in here, and honestly, I'm just, I, I just don't want to. And that's because I've already built it over here, the Carrot and Potato Farm. Like I said earlier, I was gonna expand it and make it bigger. Uh, I'm not gonna get rid of this one or anything, I'm just gonna put the new one over there and probably never look at this one again. I'm going to start on the top layer first. So I'll start with a layer of grass blocks right about here. And it goes about one, two, three, four, five, just like the pumpkin and melon farm. And I'll bridge across the other side like this. And then I'll put a water log slab here on this block, put the composter on top with a frog light. Then I'll put a slab here for the villager to stand on. And we just grab a bed and we put it right here. So the villager can wake up and stand right here on this block. Then I'll put glass around the whole thing. And then I need some bamboo planks to go right across here like this and like this. And then this right back here is where the villagers will stand so for now i'll just put in the blocks here and then some blocks right here and this is actually gonna be the top layer so i'm actually gonna put slabs all across the top here just like that but the next layer will go down right about here and i'm just gonna go down and build eight layers of this so that's one two three four five layer six layer seven and layer eight should line up perfectly right here right above this this might take a while Okay, the main structure is in place, so now I can put in the hopper line. And just like the old farm, I need a hopper facing down, then I need a rail with a hopper minecart on it, and then I break the rail, place a block with another rail with another hopper minecart, and then I break the rail on the block and put a trapdoor over it like this. I can walk under that, so I'm not going to mess with it, but no villager could walk under it, and that's what's important. And now I can repeat it seven more times. Yay. And done. Other than the villagers, we have the first module complete, and I need to do that for this side. So... And now both sides are done. Uh, it's not any bit functional because there's no villagers in here, but I mean, it looks it looks pretty cool, right? Just out of curiosity, let's see how many villagers I have up here. Zero. You need more potatoes? I can give you more potatoes. Okay, so since there's no villagers in here yet, I'm going to go ahead and start on the drop shoot, but I'm not going to take it all the way down just yet since I still have to do the collection system. And I think if I block it off right about here, it should be okay. And as long as I have some blocks like this and then some water at the bottom, they should be okay. That'd be really cool if the villagers would just like exist. They're not going to exist, are they? Nope, not for a while. So after I planted the carrots and potatoes in their respective farms, I went up to the trading hall and made sure that half the room had carrot trades while the other half had potato trades, or some combination of both. Then after putting in some final decorations, it was time to move on to stage four, collecting the items. First one I'm going to do is the sugarcane farm because it's producing a good amount of sugarcane. I need to make this 10 droppers tall. So one, two, nine, and 10. So you need to detect that and then you'll go up to the same as the droppers and then you need to power the droppers. And then I need to make a little redstone clock here oh that's yeah that's loud let me just break this for the time being we'll come back to that oh gosh <laughs> and before i do anything else i'm gonna put the water stream right along here my idea for the collection system is to use shulker boxes which will give me a lot more storage for all the items so the items will go into this shulker box loader designed by nben's games and then once the box is full it'll be sent down to a double chest at the bottom and don't worry i made sure to load the system with plenty of shulker boxes so now what i can do is put down the button and prime the system so then i can replace the redstone and observers like so and now all the sugar cane will go into the shulker box up here and once it's full it'll go down to the hopper line and be put in the chest I should probably go put in the chests. Okay, finally, I can do the bottom section here. So let me just go ahead and get rid of all these frog lights. And the reason I waited so long to do this is because I wanted to wait until I had the collection system ready to go. Also, I kind of want... You know what? Yeah, let's make this wood. I'm trying to texture the ground so it's not completely the same everywhere, which I'm sure no one's really going to notice or care, but I, I notice... 
and I kind of care. And then on this side, it's going to be a bunch of double chests. And then we'll take some bamboo stairs and they'll go above here. And this is where the item frames will go for all the items. And then we put hoppers in the back of all these chests. And for this one, I'm going to bring it like this. I'm going to bring it up by four. And then I'm going to carry it across here. And then I'll bring it up by another four. And then it'll go right there. So now it's lined up with that chute. And then I need some glass right here. And this will just take the items all the way up to the top. Wait, no, from the top to the bottom. And we're good. We're good. I don't have to worry about the sugar cane farm anymore. Okay, cool. Before I do the rest of this, I'm kind of out of materials. So I need to go grab some more materials because I'm out of materials. All right, tree farm. How much bone meal do you have? None. You have no, no bone meal. All right, off to the wither skeleton farm. Do I have any bones in here? So I don't want to farm as much. Oh, I do. Wait. 12 seconds later. I'm only afk for a few... They have pumpkins on their heads? Oh, I forgot. It's Halloween when I'm recording this. It's Hall Happy Halloween, by the way. Um, I'm sure this will upload on like Thanksgiving, but you know, I could, I could trap one of them. Next one with a carved pumpkin on his head. We'll go in this boat right here. Wait, that actually worked. I could put blocks here for now. So they're all trapped there. Fly away because I have one of the carved pumpkin ones. Now, if I come back. Okay, good. It's just them. Whoa. So now I should be able to just break the scaffolding. I will despawnify this whole area here. Ow. He should be okay there. That's, they're not okay. I might want to grab another one. I'm just going to put a boat right here and all of you can come out here. You, there's a, ah, is that a jack of pump? A jack of pumpkin is that jack melon dude that's a, he has one that's lit up first order of business is to close this door and you are gone now i need to come back up here break that so the system's fixed look at him look at him ah yeah i mean i knew this the whole this is exactly why i didn't upload i knew exactly that this would happen and um and I was just waiting to show you guys my genius. Skeletons aside, I made my way to the end and AFK'd the Shulker farm. I then went back to the overworld to AFK the tree farm since I may have ran out of oak wood. Heading back to the build, I went up to the pumpkin farm and began making the Shulker box loader. Using the same design as before, sending the items down a water stream, which definitely didn't mess up any concrete at all. Loaded the system with Shulker boxes and made the hopper line to send the boxes to its chest at the bottom. Then once that was done, I replicated the same system for the melon farm. Now I'm finally going to put in where the villagers will go, since this is kind of the whole point of making a new breeder. So I'm going to put in a dropper and a dispenser with some hoppers facing into it, a barrel, and a button. So the idea is that when this is full of minecarts, it'll send one out and refill the dispenser. And for decoration, I'll put a bamboo fence with a lantern on top. Then maybe I could put some trapdoors here too. And I just need to put in some glass. Now the villagers can drop to the bottom. Now let me just go ahead and build the sugar systems for the carrot and potato farms. All right, villagers. Why do you work so well? Oh, what is wrong with this breeder? Do I need to have traded with you? Is that your problem? You know what? You know what? I've been rude this whole time. All right, I, I take it back. Carrots are the superior crop. I'll get rid of every last potato here. And you have to uh, not have poisonous potatoes because that's ugly. So I'll even trade with you for carrots. You both like carrots. Okay, okay. Take your carrots. You can even have your potatoes back if you really want them. Can you can you breed now? Because I really need villagers. I really don't like that that's missing. It was a stylistic choice to keep been missing and by that i mean i just didn't have enough trapdoors yeah and that was a mistake i don't know how i feel about that if it's glass it's gonna look really weird honestly you know what you know what let's just do this instead there we go oh that's so much more open it looks so much better but then that's weird okay that's better there we go now it's now it's now it feels complete and now i can finally put in the items for the storage system pumpkin melon carrot potato and sugar cane and of course you know, reorganize my inventory and pretend like that was, I didn't just have one of each item, but uh, yeah, look at that. It's all done. Woo is what I would say if I hadn't messed up the breeder. But before I finally realized what I did wrong, I decided to make a new rail line and finish the carrot and potato farm after I capture this zombie. Oh, oh my gosh. It's a, it's a spooky zombie. Okay. Mangrove, mangrove. I have mangrove. Uh, we can go over here go to this house. You want to be in this house? Yay, spooky zombie. And I'll forget about him. But I mean, that'll be a nice surprise sometime in the future. And this one. Finally made it out of that. Oh, you have a carved pumpkin on your head. No, 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 no. I need you. Oh, I need you so bad. Okay. Can you follow me all the way down here, please? Follow me, buddy. There's nothing that's going to go wrong. Okay. I'm going to put a bucket of water there. And that was weird. That lagged. Actually, it needs to go on this side. And then you just fall down in the water. I know, I know. I'm very delicious. You'll eat my brains, yada, yada. 
Yay, I got two of them. Okay, now I can move the villagers to the farm again. But that's the last time I'm doing that, since I finally found the issue with the breeder. It wasn't the potatoes, it wasn't trading, it was too short. It was an easy fix though, I just broke some of the top and put glass over it, and gave it a bamboo trim, finally completing the villager breeder. Which I then followed by capturing a spooky scary skeleton. This is the last time I do this, I promise. But with that, it's time to move on to the final stage, testing the farms. Everything is now functional, so it's time to finally see what one hour of AFKing can get me. Where are these zombies coming from? Oh, 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 that's, that's not good. I found where the zombie came from. Okay, well, oh, there's, there was it's just a line of water. I'm, I, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. You're supposed to be up here. There we go. Uh, yeah, that, that's just broken. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey guys. Um, <gasps> there's villagers. Okay, now I actually have to kill you guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was gonna let you ha all have fun and stuff, but. That's a problem. I need to go get that guy. Zombie. Oh, hey guys, how you doing? And we have nothing. Nothing in, in any of these. Um, We have villagers though. There's a lot of villagers here. That's good. Oh, oh my, I am so dumb. So I may or may not have forgotten to provide a way to power the droppers. Well, we're about, we're about to see how much stuff I would have gotten if I knew how to do redstone. So now you should have pumpkins and melons and carrots and potatoes and sugarcane. Okay, now we have everything. Look at that. Um, why are there potatoes in the carrot box? You know what? This is Hardcore Minecraft, and a few hundred blocks from my base is this village, which inspired me to build my own Christmas village. So that's what I'm doing today. But before I can make this into a Christmas village, I need to do some preparation. Wait! I forgot about this. This is from episode two. Wait, is there? There's the one down here. This is when I was breeding all the frogs for the frog light farm. And I just sat here for like four hours. So yeah, objective number one, terraform this entire area. So I actually have something to work with. Okay, as you can see now, the there's a lot of mobs here. There were, there were no mobs when I was terraforming. Where did all these guys come from? Anyways, now that this is all terraformed, roughly, I want to start outlining where each building's going to go. And there we go. Now we have all the outlines in place. So now I have a spot for each building. So these are like the main four. And then all of these are houses. I just use different colors because I ran out of wool. That wool farm is not very fast. But uh, yeah, anyways, let's move on to the first build, which is going to be... Nothing. It's nothing because I don't have any of the materials. Okay, so I need a lot of materials and I want to upload before Christmas. So let's do this really fast. And with these last blocks going in this chest right here, that's a shulker box. I finally have all the materials I need for the Christmas village, which took a lot longer to gather than I thought they would. Again. Anyways, yeah, we can finally start working on the first building, which is going to be the grocery store. I know, very interesting. I mean, when you think of entertaining Minecraft content, you obviously think of going to the grocery store. But first, I'm going to go ahead and dig out a little bit more of this wall. And in typical AGN fashion, I accidentally paused my recording, so here's the replay of me building the front door. On each side of the front door, I'm gonna put in some windows, so I'll put warp trap doors here, followed by some stairs, with a fence gate facing this way, and this will actually go all the way down like so, and I'll open all of these, and then we'll have some brick walls going across the top like, like, like this, eh, with another stair right there. And then behind the window, we'll have quartz, quartz, and then some green concrete right here, just to give the window some more color. And I'll put slabs above the window, some barrels in front for decoration, and smooth sandstone in the corners for a pop of color. I wanna take this time to note that I did design all of these in creative beforehand, and I'm looking at my creative reference, so I'm not like freestyling this, I'm not like a master class builder. It in fact took me three days to design all the buildings you see in this video. So now I'm gonna outline the side walls. Just gonna put some snow down real quick so the walls aren't 
floating, the walls, which I forgot to place. The back wall will be pretty similar with bricks, stairs, and walls, but I'm actually going to put a door back here with a mangrove stair on top. Well, you know what? I built up the back wall. I might as well build up these walls too. And now all the windows are done. They're mostly done. I have one detail left and that is the frog lights, which I don't have. That is the frog lights because I don't want anything spawning in here. Heading back to the front, I began working on the second story, starting with a line of smooth cores. I then used warp wood for more windows, dividing them with more mangrove planks, trapdoors, and stairs before outlining the roof with polished andesite. And there we go. The front of the build is now complete and I gotta say it looks pretty cool. So now it's time to build up the other walls. Okay, so now the walls are done and we can move on to the roof. I'm going to do that little bit that protrudes at the front. So we have stairs, slabs, and then some bricks at the back. You know what? For the sake of making everything easier on myself, let's go ahead and fill in the roof. So I'm going to take some deep slate tile slabs and make an outline. And then below that, the blocks will go across the top like this. And that's the roof with the final blocks going here. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to keep this back. Door. I was going to close it off, but I think I'm actually going to keep this back door open for the time being just so like I could walk in here if I really wanted to. Um, oh my, before we move on, to the next building, I want to build the first of three house designs I'm using in this village. This design is by Minecraft APK on Pinterest, which will be linked in the description. And what I really like about it is that it uses stairs to create windows. For some reason, I just never thought about doing that before, so I wanted to include it in this project. I also went around and added some barrels, leaves, and lanterns before lighting up the inside and completing the first house of the village. Seriously, it's gonna look so cool by the end of the video. Next up is the bookstore, and I'm using mud bricks for the base, and then more frog lights for the windows, with mangrove as the accent color. Then for the walls, I'm gonna use some smooth sandstone. The front door is going to be over here and it'll eventually be a small tower, but I need more space to work with. Then I can line the top with smooth quartz and put spruce doors right here. And then going across the top will be some jungle fence gates with warp slabs above them for an overhang. Snow can't fall on slabs, so I'm going to use some more smooth quartz to make it look like it's partially covered in snow. And now that I'm up here, I can build up the rest of the tower. But before I finish it, I'm going to take a line of sandstone as a trim with some jungle buttons for more detail. And then I can take some bricks to use for the wall with more mangrove for the center window. To finish the tower, I'm going to use the same snow trick I did like three seconds ago, just like that. So then for the third floor, I'll use mud bricks for the walls. Let's see if I can make a circular window at the front too, with maybe some more fence gates for more color. So then I can finish out the front with a little decorative piece on top, kind of like I did with the last building. And I'm going to use spruce to outline the window with birch trap doors behind it. Then I'll finish the top with more deep slate and quartz with some frog lights behind the window. Now the front of the build is completely done. That looks pretty sick. Oh crap. Oh, all right, you come here. Yo, not you though. Especially not you! Using largely the same concept as the front, I filled in the sidewalls with sandstone and bricks, separating the layers with a line of deep slate with some stone buttons on them for extra detail. Behind the tower, I added another overhang and used some mangrove wood for the windows. Last part of this is the roof, which I will get to once it stops snowing and- Oh! Okay, now it's time for the roof and I'm going to use more deep slate, but I'm also going to mix in some of the smooth quartz again so it actually looks like there's some snow on the roof. And then I can put in the final blocks here. But now we can see the bookstore is finally complete. Look at that. It looks so cool. Oh man, I wonder what the interior looks like. Okay. Honestly, building this was a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I'm so happy with the result and I can't wait to see what the whole village looks like at the end of the video. Uh, yeah, I need to get better shears. After making some upgraded shears, I began working on the second house, using a similar block palette as the previous one. This house was designed by Spitinic, which makes use of slabs for some of the windows, sort of like how the last one used stairs. I also made sure to add window decorations for each side of the house, making sure each side felt unique. I also went back to finish decorating the first house, but... Okay, that's good. Oh my gosh. How many creepers are gonna interrupt me throughout this video? Anyways, moving on to the third house designed by Mechatect. I used a mix of stones for the patio and then campfires for an overhang. I also really like this window in the front since it helps break up the roof a little bit. I don't wanna spend too much time talking about these houses since they're not the main point of the video. So once the main structure was built, I went around to finish the decorations, marking the third house complete. The third building is gonna be a church. I think it'd be a little odd to have a Christmas village without a church, cause you know, Christmas. So I'll start with some warp wood at the front, then the doors go right here, surrounded by sandstone. And eventually we'll have towers on either side, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out. And I can connect them to the door with some bricks and walls. I might as well start building the tower, so there will be like a window here. This time I'm using stairs on the top and bottom. I know, I'm such an innovator. Back at the front, I'll take some more sandstone and make some sort of trim design, kinda like this. We take our frog lights, put them in front of the doors, because no one's allowed to enter this building apparently. I don't know why I said apparently, like someone else made the rule. That's my rule. Gotta put frog lights here too. Then 
they'll make another line of sandstone with more windows in the towers. And then across the back, I can use a combination of walls and solid blocks to add some more depth and then more sandstone. Yeah, that totally looks right. Now let me go ahead and build up the rest of this tower. For the top of each tower, I'm actually gonna use bamboo since it's as close to a gold color as I can get. And I just round up to top like that. Cool. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. Then the last thing to do on the front is to add this bit of warped wood, which is where the roof will be. I don't want to bore you with the build process on the other walls since they're much simpler and pretty repetitive. So once again, here's some super fast replays of me building them along with the roof. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, oh, okay, I thought that was my last warp stair would have been really cool, but still, man, that looks cool. Look at that. Can you imagine how cool it's going to be when I fly through this later in the video? I'll be like, zoo. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about these houses, by the way. Maybe I should work on the houses. Yeah, let's work on some. I got to work on some houses before I like make any executive decisions about terrain. Using the same three designs I showed before, I built the rest of the houses in the village, building each design one at a time and then going back and adding some details like glow berries, flowers, and decorated pots. And while I do this, I want to let you know that I just launched my Patreon. So if you enjoy these videos and want to show some extra support, consider becoming a member today to earn some exclusive benefits and rewards, including a world download after each episode. The link is in the description. But with that, it's now time for the final building, the Toyland. First step is to make the outline. Then for the front, I'm going to use stone bricks with some jungle planks and stone brick stairs. And I'll build a little arch. Then we can take our doors and they'll face in like that. And then we need some blocks of coal right here. Um... For me to realize that I put the stairs in the wrong spot because I'm a very great Minecraft player. And then we'll just cover it up like that. So that is like our tall central main door, but obviously I'm not doing interiors because I'm lazy. So I'll use stripped oak for the walls with some birch. Then I'll put in another window and then we'll put some stairs like that. So that covers the window. Then up here, I'm going to put in another set of doors like this. How the heck did I do that? Anyways, I'm gonna outline this set of doors with spruce with stairs. Now we have two doors, which I think looks really cool. So then we can build up the first tower. That was cool, right? Like the texturing. Man, I'm so proud of that. That was, that took so long to design. Okay, let's move on to a small tower on the right side. So on that side, we have slabs in the middle and then stairs on the outside. But on this one, we're gonna do stairs in the middle and slabs on the outside. And I think that's just gonna add some nice variation to the build and not make it look so ugly. Moving on to the right side of the building, I built up the wall and used jungle fence gates for an overhang, just like I did before for the bookstore, looping around the back side to finish the overhang and adding another one to the other side. For this tower in the back, I'm going to start with some stairs going in like a U shape with a slab in the middle. Then I'll take a couple more stairs with some more stripped oak and a slab. And I'll continue that all the way around. And then I'll realize that I put the slabs in the wrong spot and they're actually supposed to go right here. Build up to the top, put a window with some coal blocks, bring some mud brick walls all the way up, make another window and another on the left side. Then I'm going to go back here and go with our oak stairs and oak slabs like we did on this tower right here and one more window on the right side then we'll have two mud brick walls on either side like this and that sets us up for the roof and fence gate all right cool starting off with a small tower i began building the roof using warped wood as an outline and prismarine for the main color with mud bricks topping off each spire and connecting the roof to the jungle fence gates below for some overhangs and if i did everything properly that should be the final building of the village complete this is definitely my favorite though like this just looks super cool i love the geometry on this thing but we're not done yet because as you can tell from the green wool i want to add some paths did i sink into the snow so after changing some coal blocks out for frog lights because i definitely didn't mess that up at all it's finally time to finish the build and turn this plot of buildings into a proper village And now finally, the village is complete. We start our path here and we can make our way down to this house here, or we could walk up, go to the grocery store. We have some lampposts. We have some retaining walls over here. Oh, we have phantoms. But man, look at the village. We have all the lampposts. We have the lanterns on the path. And we can walk through all the houses. We have another retaining wall here. I'm proud of myself. Like, I have never... I've never been one to build something like this before. And the fact that I've done it in this video... It's a Christmas miracle. That's what it is. Also, I made this bridge. Um, That wasn't there before. Man, it looks so cool. I am loving the look of... The Ow. Oh, yeah. That's right. Man, look at this area. This is so cool. I am so... So happy with this how this turned out but man that looks awesome that is oh! is that gonna fix that 
It's not. Okay, so I guess I'll have to just. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. What did I just do? What did I just do? I'm so stupid. Wait, hold on. Why did I die? I thought I had a totem. Is that it? Where am I, bro? Wait, so. That's it. I ser I'm so stupid. I guess you're not really going to see much of anything other than this death part. I had started this path here and I need wood. So I went and I, well, you can't see it, but it had gone further. And I was going to extend this path all the way across for like from here to the farms. What's under here? Oh, there was a spawner here the whole time. I feel so stupid. I literally was going to go and I was going to take this obsidian house. And since I had so much obsidian from the end, yeah, all this obsidian, I was going to use it to make a bunch more houses like this and just line it up all the way down and make like a, uh, like a little district over here. I was going to, yeah, I was going to build an obsidian village in Minecraft hardcore. And that was going to be the plan. Um, and I wanted this to be like the main central path. Yeah, that's, that's kind of sad. Uh, I'm gonna, for the sake of this, just so I can load in the chunks. Day 693. I survived 693 days in the world. Oh, my food's done. All right. Um, my food's done. That's, I guess I gotta go. Okay. Well, I will get the rest of the world download prepared. All right. Bye, everyone.